Good morning, good afternoon. Good morning, yeah. It's not exactly a very good morning. And the reason why I'm actually doing this live is because of a post that I saw shared on Instagram and I wanted to talk about it on this particular live, which is concerning the VAT Act of 2013 and an update that has come out in 2020 that I actually want to look at right now so that we can be able to go through it together with you. And I give you my thoughts as well on what I actually think about it. And as well, probably just what can we do concerning this particular act that has come in. So the reason I'm actually looking on this end is I'm trying to figure out a way to share my screen as well. So just allow me to be able to do that in a moment. So this is a discussion that I feel every single uh, content creator needs to actually look at so that we can, we can have a better discussion on the same. So the first thing that I would love for you to do is just confirm for me if the audio is okay. If it is, then uh, place it in the chat. Let me know that the audio is okay. Then you'll give me a second to actually be able to share this with uh, that friend of mine where I saw the post itself and then we can get into the discussion. So I actually really want us to go through the whole discussion because my feeling is that with the VAT Act and whatever is actually happening is we have uh, laws that are actually being put into place which do not exactly think about the ramifications of how exactly it is going to be put into place, or even the, the implications and how it will affect the people it is intended for, yeah? So I'll just start basically with what the mandate of CARE is, and that may be really simple. And I actually want to go through uh, what they say their work is. So the first thing is, and I'm reading from their site, I wish I could be able to share this, but I'm reading from their site and they say this, that the CARE was established by an act of parliament in 1995 and their work is to collect revenue on behalf of the government of Kenya. Their core functions of the authority is to assess, collect and account for all revenues in accordance with the written laws and specified provisions of the written laws, to advise on matters relating to the administration of and collection of revenue under the written laws or the specified provision of the written laws, and to perform, perform such other functions in relation to revenue as the minister may direct. Now, from my understanding of the KRA, they are under the Ministry of Finance or under Treasury. And uh, one of the tax acts that we most of the time speak about is the Income Tax Act, which many people fall under. And there is also the VAT Act, which now is the subject of this discussion. And there are other acts that are there. I am not a tax expert, believe me. and. I would love to actually have a tax accountant come and speak on the same thing, but these are my thoughts on the same. So the thing that I want to actually read for you is the VAT Act, and then we'll look at the amendment that is actually being done to the VAT Act. So the VAT Act is an act of 2013. And the act says, and I'm actually reading from Section 8, which is actually mentioned uh, as where the amendment is actually showing up from. That's the reason why 
I'm reading section eight. The whole uh, VAT Act deals with so many things. But section eight says this in subsection one. It says a supply of services is made in Kenya if the place of business of the supplier from which the services are supplied is in Kenya. That's the first thing. So this means that any service that is done within Kenya is covered as, that's the place of supply. So the service is being done in Kenya. That's the first part. Then the second part is, if the place of the business of the supplier is not in Kenya, okay? So the person who's providing the particular business is not in Kenya, then the supply of services shall be deemed to be made in Kenya if the recipient of the supply is not a registered person, so they are a foreigner, or and the services are physically performed in Kenya by a person who is in Kenya at a time of supply. So the place of the business of the supplier is not in Kenya, but the services are physically performed in Kenya. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just reading it out and giving out what I think is the interpretation. Then number two, the services are directly related to immovable property in Kenya. So that is the second. Then the third is that the services are radio or television broadcasting services received at an address in Kenya. The services are electronic services delivered to a person in Kenya at the time of the supply. And number four, the supply is a transfer or assignment of or grant of a right to use a copyright, patent, trademark, or a similar right in Kenya. Number three, in this section, electronic services means any of the following services when provided or delivered on or through a telecommunications network. Number one, websites, web hosting, or remote maintenance of programs and equipment. Number two, software and the updating of software. Number three, images, text, and information. Number four, access to databases. Five, self-education packages. Six, music, films, and games, including games of chance, which is lottery. Number seven, political, cultural, artistic, sporting, scientific, and other broadcasts and events, including broadcast television. So I'll go just up and uh, subsection 2B says, the services are electronic services delivered to a person in Kenya at the time of supply. And the place of business of the supplier is not in Kenya. Okay? So that's the first part that the place of business of the supply is not in Kenya, but the services that are electronic services delivered to a person in Kenya at the time of supply. So any businesses that are outside Kenya and are supplying electronic services to Kenyans are under VAT, okay? So they include the ones that I've mentioned, where websites, web hosting and maintenance of programs, softwares and updating of software, images, text, and information, access to databases, self-education packages, music films and games, political, cultural, and other events, including broadcast television. So I want to go to the act, the amendment that they're trying to do right now. So it is called the Value Added Tax Digital Marketplace Supply Regulations of 2020. In exercise of the powers conferred by Section 58, which is what I actually started talking about, the Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury and Planning makes the following regulations. These regulations are known as the Value Added Tax Digital Market Supply Regulations of 2020. Now, the charge to tax. The first thing they say is value added tax 
shall be charged on taxable services supplied in Kenya through the digital marketplace. And I'll explain because it, it actually gives a scope. Then number two, where the supply under subregulation one, which is what I've just read, is made under a B2B transactions, the provisions of section 10 of the act shall apply. And we shall get to section 10. We are in section three. So the scope of, apologies for that uh, slight delay. So let's continue. So I'm reading through uh, the scope of taxable supplies. So section four says, taxable supplies made through a digital marketplace shall include electronic services under section 8.3 of the act, which I've read before. And so they're adding on to what is in the original act. In the original act, we spoke of, and allow me just to talk on this, websites, web hosting, and remote maintenance of programs and equipment, software and the updating of software, images, text, and information, access to databases, self-education packages, music, films, and games, including games of chance, and political, cultural, artistic, sporting, scientific, and other broadcast and events, including broadcast television. So that's the first part. Then include now downloadable digital content, including downloading of mobile applications, eBooks, and movies. That's the first thing. That is under the scope of taxable supplies. Number two, subscription-based media, including news, magazines, journals, streaming of TV shows and music, podcasts, and online gam uh, gaming. Number three, software uh, programs, including downloading of software, drivers, website filters, and firewalls. Number four, electronic data management, including website hosting, online data warehousing, file sharing, and cloud storage services. Supply of music, films, and games. Supply of search engine and automated help desk services including supply of customers, such engine services, tickets bought for live events, theaters, restaurants, ETC purchased through the internet, supply of distance teaching via pre-recorded medium or e-learning, including supply of online courses and training, supply of digital content for listening, viewing, or playing on any audio, visual or digital media. Supply of services on online marketplaces that links the supplier to the recipient, including transport hailing platforms and any other digital marketplace supply as may be determined by the commissioner. Okay? So now I have just read it through, but let me actually go through and give you what I feel they are trying to box in in VAT. Number one, downloadable digital content, including downloading of mobile apps, eBooks, and movies. So here, under VAT, so they're saying that they will tax any downloaded mobile applications. So in order for VAT to apply, it actually needs to be for a paid app in this case or if it is an ebook or a movie. So if you purchase a movie and download it, then you are supposed, then the person you're buying it from is supposed to pay VAT, even if they are not in Kenya. I hope you understand that. So from the initial VAT act, that is the, the original 2013 act, it says, even if the business of the supply is not in Kenya, but the person being supplied the service is in Kenya, then it falls within the scope. So mobile apps that you download, that you pay for, eBooks that you have paid for, movies that you have paid for. Now, if you do not pay, you see VAT is on the selling price. So if you have not paid an amount for a particular item, then VAT does not apply on it, okay? The VAT will be zero because VAT right now is at 14%. So if you haven't purchased anything, then 
uh, it's 14% of zero. You get that part. Now, the second one is on subscription-based media, including news, magazines, journals, streaming of TV shows and music, podcasts, and online gaming. So the most prominent here is things like DSTV, Showmax, Netflix, all those other streaming platforms. They, in their pricing, there needs to be VAT as well. Yeah. The third is software programs, including downloading of software drivers, website filters, and firewalls. That is the same case as, as the first one. If you're paying for it, there's a VAT, 14% on the same. Then the fourth is electronic data management, including website hosting, online data warehousing, file sharing, and cloud storage services. If they are paying for it, if you're paying for it, you pay VAT as well. Then the fifth is supply of music, films, and games. Now, this is where it starts getting technical. So supply of music, films, and games. So if that person is making money or supplying it in Kenya and making money in Kenya, then they're supposed to pay VAT on it. Now, I don't know if... Uh, how musicians pay taxes. I don't know how actors pay taxes, but this is now where you start getting affected because now films as well are under taxable supplies. Then the next is supply of search engine and automated help desk services, including supply of customized search engine services. That is almost self-explanatory. Then tickets bought for live events theaters, restaurants purchased through the internet. So you have sites like Eventbrite, you have sites like Ticketsasa, MOOC.com. Now in the tickets that they will be selling, they need to include VAT as well. Are we together? Then the next is supply of distance teaching via pre-recorded medium or e-learning including supply of online courses and training. Now, let me go to the extreme for this one. Right now, children are doing e-learning. And the e-learning that they are doing, most of the schools are actually charging for it. So schools are supposed to pay VAT as well on the same. Now, before I give my personal uh, uh, opinions on VAT, VAT should be value added tax, yeah? So if you've picked something, then added value on it, then the government is saying, pay me on this. So schools that are doing online teaching, universities that are offering online learning, if your students are paying for it, 14% is required. I'm just reading from the act. Then the next one is supply of digital content for listening, viewing, or playing on any audio, visual, or digital media. This is now where we are. This is you and me. So I'm supplying digital content, okay? Because we are on YouTube, I'm supplying digital content. So what the government is telling me is, I am supposed to pay 14% VAT because I'm supplying, and if you look at my analytics, 60% of the viewers that I have. So my network is, uh, <laughs> my network is a bit of a problem, but I'll answer your questions in a minute. So part nine says, supply of digital content for listening, viewing or playing on any audio, visual or digital media. And you see when this is actually done and they say, any audio, visual, or digital media, they mean everything from Spotify to SoundCloud to iTunes to YouTube to Twitch to Instagram to Facebook, wherever it is you are supplying digital content from, you are supposed to pay VAT. Now, the one thing that is, uh, I, I don't call it you're lucky if you're not making money on social media. That's, 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 that's what this act is saying. 
that if you're just doing it and you're not making any money, then you're making zero, so we'll do zero. But the problem is, of what help? Let me, let me go through the next one first, and then we can come to complain. Number 10, supply of services, supply of services on online marketplaces that links the supplier to the recipient, including transport hailing platforms. So let me go through this again. Supply of services on online marketplaces that links the supplier to the recipient. Number one, Jumia. Number two, Kilimall. Number three, Twigger Foods. All the services, all, all marketplaces that link the supplier to the recipient are supposed to pay VAT. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you, whichever platforms where you get uh, a supplier connected with a recipient, they are supposed to pay VAT, including transport hailing platforms. So your Uber, your little, your uh, whatever, Dada, now it's Dada, and they've just come into the market, but VAT on you as well. So the transport that you'll be paying on your Uber, on your little cab, on all those, they will have a VAT element on them. Apart from the fact that these companies are still paying taxes, apart from the fact that the drivers are paying taxes, now you, as the user, you will also be paying taxes for using those services as well. Next, section five, and I'll come to your question. I'll actually go through your questions. Section five, registration. A person supplying taxable services through a digital marketplace shall be required to register for VAT in Kenya. Okay, where, number one, the digital marketing, the digital marketplace supplies are supplied by a person from a place of export country to a recipient in Kenya in a B2C transaction. This is what that means. That the person who's supplying the service is not in Kenya. It's a business that is not in Kenya. But the transaction they are doing is with a person who is in Kenya. The person who is in Kenya and it's an individual. That means your Facebook, Instagram, all those platforms, YouTube included, as well as Netflix, as well as Uber and Little Cup, all those companies, they may not be stationed in the country, but they provide business to consumer transactions. So they are supposed to register for VAT. Okay? Number two, the person is conducting business in Kenya as provided under Section 82 of the Act. That's the act I read at the beginning. And any of the following circumstances are present. The recipient of the supply is in Kenya. That's the first one, which means that you're supplying to Kenyans and you're conducting business in Kenya. Number two, the payment made to the supplier in the export country for the supply of digital marketplace supplies originates from a bank registered or authorized in Kenya. So if you are conducting business in Kenya and then you make a payment to the supplier in the export country, then, and they are supplying with digital marketplace supplies, then VAT applies, okay? So let me just try and explain what I feel it means. So if you're using a particular service and then you pay Netflix, for instance, and it has been, of course, Netflix, you do your card or you do M-Pesa or do PayPal. By the, if it says from a bank registered or authorized in Kenya, that applies to M-Pesa as well, yeah? So you are receiving that supply you are receiving your Netflix subscription, you're receiving your Showmax subscription, you're receiving DSTV, then they should pay for it in that particular case. Then number three, 
the recipient of that digital marketplace supply has business residential or postal address in Kenya. Okay? That's, that's. Number two, a person from an export country who makes B2C supply of services to a recipient who is in Kenya shall be required to register for VAT through a simplified VAT registration framework as provided under these regulations and shall declare and pay VAT at the rate specified in section 52B. Number three, notwithstanding subregulation two, a person from an export country making B2C digital marketplace supplies to recipients in Kenya who is not able to register under the simplified VAT registration shall appoint a tax representative for them to account for the VAT on their supplies. Okay? So simplified VAT registration framework, I don't need to go through that. If you need to register for VAT, then you register for VAT. Determination of place of supply. A digital marketplace supply shall be deemed to have been made in Kenya, where number one, the recipient of the supply is in Kenya, the payment proxy, including credit card information and bank account details of the recipient of the digital supplies is in Kenya, and the residence proxy, including the billing or home address or access proxy, including IP address, mobile country code or SIM card of the recipient is in Kenya. This is what it means. In order to determine if a the, the, the digital marketplace supply is in Kenya, number one, the person who's receiving that particular supply is in Kenya, they are physically present in Kenya. Number two, they have paid for a service and the credit card shows that they are in Kenya. So that means that if you have a card for any of the banks in Kenya and you pay for a particular supply, then that supply is deemed to have been done in Kenya. Number three, if someone who's outside the country but has a billing or home address or a phone number in Kenya and that pays for the service, then that service is deemed to have been in Kenya. Okay? Time and supply and accounting and payment of tax. Then we can go into an interpretation of how it actually affects each of us. So the time of digital marketplace supply shall be the earlier of the date on which the payment of supply is received in whole or in part, or, or the date on which the invoice or receipt for the supply is issued. So in order to determine the time they look at two things. When did you pay for it or when was the invoice issued? Which is the earlier of the two? That shall be deemed as the time of the supply. Number two, where an intermediary whose place of business is in Kenya makes a digital marketplace supply on behalf of a person, the intermediary shall be required, required to charge and account for the VAT on such supplies, whether such, such other person is registered for VAT or not. So I'll give an example, and I don't know how Uber works, but if Uber has appointed an intermediary in Kenya, let's call it Uber Kenya. If they have appointed Uber Kenya to be their intermediary in Kenya, then Uber Kenya is supposed to charge VAT on all the people that have actually used their services and remit that on behalf of the person who has appointed them, Uber itself. I hope that's understood. Tax on a digital marketplace supply made by a person from an export country shall be the liability of the supplier from an export country or their tax representative. This has to do with exports. If you're doing an export to Kenya, then VAT is applicable then a registered person shall re submit a return on the form on or before 20th day of the month following the end of the tax period. So if we are in June, then the next VAT in this particular case,
that is supposed to actually be filed by 20th July for June. So VAT is usually filed every single month and you are supposed to report it by 20th of the next month. If you do not file your VAT returns by 20th of the next month, there's a fine of 10,000 shillings. That's on VAT. Then, if you have actually, so this is on claim for input tax. So if, if you have registered under the simplified VAT registration framework, there is no deduction of input tax. Now, the way VAT works usually is whenever you purchase a commodity and you have been charged VAT, that is usually called input tax. So your supplier is charging you, there is tax on the same. Then if you sell that particular commodity and you charge VAT as well, that's called output tax. So what usually those businesses do is that they subtract, they do the difference of output tax and input tax. So the money they have made and the money they're supposed to pay, the difference is what now usually goes to KRA. So for many businesses, that's what usually happens. Then for the purpose of a B2C digital marketplace supply, a supplier from an export country shall be exempt from the requirements of an ETR as prescribed under the act and the relevant regulation provided that the supplier shall be required to issue an invoice or receipt showing the value of the supply and tax deducted. So uh, whenever you get a receipt, it's supposed to have an ETR, okay? So if it's a B2C digital marketplace supply, they're being told they don't have to issue ETR receipts, but they have to issue, uh, they actually have to issue an invoice or a receipt showing the value of the supply. <sighs> Amendment of returns, record keeping offenses. A person who fails to comply with the provisions of these regulations shall in addition to the penalties prescribed under the act be liable to restriction of access to the digital marketplace in Kenya until such obligations are fulfilled. Let me say that again. If you are supposed to pay VAT under this act and you fail to do so, the government is now saying that they will restrict access to that digital marketplace, okay? Wherever it is that business is actually being done from, you can be restricted until you have paid the obligations as per the act. Now, let me go through the questions that you have actually asked. And uh, Writer's Fantasy says, I have been struggling to understand this new uh, carry information. She says, I've been struggling to understand the, this new carry information on digital entrepreneurs. I'm looking forward to learn from your interpretation. Now, that's what I'm actually going to go through right now after reading all this. Then Esther asks, so does it mean if I make money off of YouTube, I'm supposed to pay VAT on that as well? That's a good question, and I'll actually answer it. This is going to be tough, Quinn says, because everything is affected, Mpaka V2 has it fine. That is true. And then Esther says the grid, of course, the, the grid here is just mind-blowing. Navile Pesaya, YouTube with peanuts. Very true, by the way. <laughs> uh, Queen says, social media itabidi equate disabled Kenya mpaka mtu alipie. That crazy. Ngoja mskie demonstrations. That's very true. How about receiving payments from other countries through PayPal and Western Union? How is this recorded and how do you file for this? And Elizabeth says things are getting worse. Now, let me go through this again so that we can be able to actually understand exactly what this means. Now, taxable supply. So we said that supply of digital content for listening, viewing, or playing on any audio, visual, or digital media. Now, this is what it means. If you are a content creator and you make money 
from YouTube at the end of the month. 14% of that amount belongs to KRA under this act. That's simply what it means. Because they've said supply of digital content for listening, viewing, or playing on any audio, visual, or digital media. It's that simple. If you're making 100 shillings from, from uh, YouTube in the month, and then remember one of the things, and this is a sneaky part, and this is the thing that I actually don't like. The thing that they have actually done is that they're requiring that someone registers for VAT, okay? Now, once you register for VAT, you see right now, let's just backtrack. Right now, we are in June, yeah? And the deadline for uh, filing of your income tax returns for 2019 is 30th of June. VAT is a completely different animal, completely. VAT is filed monthly. Now, if you have been forgetting filing your returns and you are, you, you've been hit by a deadline of something that has a six-month window, what is now supposed to happen now if you're being told that you're supposed to, sub, to, to, to file monthly? And number one, this is content that we are not being assisted by the government to even do anything. And most of the people who are now, quote unquote, making money from social media, many of these people have taken years upon years of their own effort. And now the government wants to say, I'm coming for that 10 shillings that you're making. I'm coming for that 100 shillings that you're making. I'm coming for that 1,000 shillings that you're making. Now, for many uh, content creators and for many YouTubers in Kenya, you don't get... Uh, there are a number of people who get the monthly uh, payment from YouTube, okay? And there is a minimum that is usually set, which is the 70 euros, okay, to be paid for the month. Now, if you earn that above that every single month, then you are getting a monthly check on AdSense from YouTube. So for those people, what YouTube is saying is that you need to be paying your 14% every single month, okay? Now, YouTubers get paid on 22nd, but the deadline for the return is on 20th. Number two, which is actually the biggest problem with what is, trying, what is about to happen. Number two problem that is there is the fact that the people who are on VAT, if you fail to file a return, you are going to be charged 10,000 shillings. Now, there are those who have actually gone through this where when someone is uh, registering for a, a, a PIN number, carry PIN number, and then you put your obligation as income tax and VAT, but you're not doing any VAT related kind of uh, supply. What happens is, you are told that uh, you have arrears that need to be paid. Now, in order for those arrears to actually be cleared off, believe me, you actually have to physically go to a KRA office for that to happen. That's what usually happens because you'll do emails upon emails upon emails. I have businesses that I formed which have, VA, which have uh, uh, income tax returns We've never done business on them because, of course, we tried to get tenders, but we never got them. But then you're still being told that you still need to pay the 20K because you didn't file returns. You forgot to file returns in some two, three years ago, 20,000 shillings. Now, what I want you to do and what you need to understand, for you to be required to register for VAT, I'll actually go to the 2013 Act, okay? So that I can be able to just put your minds at ease because I know that uh, I'm actually just going through the list to just look at registration. 
part 9, uh, so 34. I hope that this is helpful. So I'm about to be done with this. So in the tax act, in the VAT act, uh, section 34 application for registration. You see, we've gone through the first one. So the second one says, a person who in the course of business has taxable supplies or expects to make taxable supplies, the value of which is 5 million shillings or more in a period of 12 months or is about to commence making taxable supplies, the value of which is reasonably expected to exceed 5 million shillings in any period of 12 months, shall be liable for registration under this act and shall within 30 days of becoming so liable apply to the commissioner for registration in the prescribed form. So this is what it means. If on your digital marketplace in 12 months, you are making 5 million shillings and above, or you expect to be making 5 million shillings and above, then you are covered under the VAT Act. Okay, so this particular act will not affect like almost 100% of YouTube content creators because many of us are not making 5 million shillings in 12 months. So allow me just to do a simple math of 5 million divided by 12, which is 2.5. I'm actually just doing the math here. Okay. So if you're making on, on, uh, on the digital space, if you're making 400,000 shillings and above a month, you are required to register for VAT under the new amendments that have been placed. So if you're making money on your YouTube, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, wherever it is, and you're making 400,000 shillings a month, then you are required to register for VAT. That is the regulation. Because uh, that amendment that we have just gone through, which talks about uh, who actually is supposed to pay, it doesn't say that, it doesn't supersede the VAT Act of 2013. So the VAT Act of 2013 has placed a threshold of an annual revenue of 5 million shillings and now these people on the digital market place. So if you're a YouTuber and you make 5 million shillings in 12 months, then you are required to pay VAT, you're required to register for VAT and then now pay for VAT. That's what the regulation says. So I hope that has been of assistance to you. And this act in itself, it needs to actually be fully explained. And when I watched that first video, I thought it was important for us to actually be able to go through it with you so that you can be able to actually truly learn exactly what this act says. So I will leave this live up so that you can be able to share it as well with other content creators, especially those you feel like they will be affected by this VAT Act, so that they can actually go through the video and learn exactly what is supposed to happen. So remember that if you, if you, if you sign up for VAT and you fail to file your VAT returns for one month, the fine is 10,000 shillings. And that accumulates over time. Okay. Let me check if there are any other. Uh, could you please give us a guideline on what the email or letter should say? I'm just wondering if continuing students should pay tax. Uh, it doesn't, uh, the students are not being asked to pay tax. It's the schools 
which are actually doing the online learning. And if they're earning 5 million and above from uh, this, if they're making 400,000 for the, for the month, then they are supposed to actually pay for VAT. But of course, if you're asked to pay for, you see what will happen is if the school, if the university is being asked to pay and register for VAT, then your fees, the online fees, whatever it is, there will be a VAT component. So students will be actually paying that. Uh, could you please give us like a guideline on what the email or letter should say? Please explain a little on the same. I don't understand the question itself. Um, let's see. Elizabeth says, I'm in university and I still don't work. Does it mean that when I get monetized, I'll pay tax? No, it means that if you start earning 400K and above, then you're supposed to register for VAT. Uh, <laughs> Queen says, Bora ni pesa inaingia, YouTubers to Nashida. Yes, if you're earning the 400,000 and above. Uh, thanks for this info, Kenya in our yes, to Tahamia Wapi. You and me both. But uh, I'm hoping that this video has been of assistance to you. And if there are no questions, I'd like to actually close it there so that I will leave this up and I'll actually update the description a bit on the same and pointing out some of the things that I feel are important for us to learn. I'll also remove some of the parts where it was buffering so that if you rewatch it again, it will be a bit easier to go through. But thank you so much for joining me for this live. And I, I don't remember the last time I did a live, but because of the confusion around the VAT Act and how it was affecting us, I thought that uh, it would be important to actually do this video. So if you want to support Mumo, there is a till number that is in the description. Send whatever it is that you would like to send. I've been here for the last 50 minutes and uh, send something. I need to just eat uh, lunch. Thank you for joining on the live and have a good 